In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, before we get into the word, we want to take one or two testimonies. I want you to know that the word of God is to be practicalized. Whenever the word of God is preached, it should produce results. Yes, the word of God is not for entertainment. Jesus was not a lecturer. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, I believe it's verse 22. Jesus Christ, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did by him in the midst of you and you yourself know and <laughs> my God what a statement so his approval was in the signs the wonders and the miracles that he did you may take your seats those of you in your homes I know some of you are standing so take your seats God bless you Jesus Christ, a man approved of God. By what? Miracles, signs, wonders, which he did. And you all know. So how do I know that Jesus is in a place when I begin to see the miracles, the signs, and the wonders? So let's take one or two testimonies that have happened this week after the word was preached on Sunday. And <laughs> my God, somebody put your hands together and say, Jesus is still doing miracles. Come on. Jesus is still doing miracles. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. As I read these testimonies, I want you to connect. Amen. 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 How many of you know that there's no distance in the realm of the spirit? Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. So connect and believe God for your own. Amen. Amen. My name is Sister Josephine Kanu. I was invited to CIIC on January 14, 2019 by a friend after the death of my husband. When I came, I was confused and everything was falling apart. I didn't know what to expect or what path I was going to take in life. During the service, the prophet called me out and told me he saw me wearing black in the realm of the spirit. I told him my husband just died a week ago. And Papa told me that God is about to wipe my tears. Amen. He did say that there is a house that I, am, that I have been fighting for that will be delivered to me and doors are going to be open for my family. Amen. Papa also prophesied to the congregation that there will be debt cancellation. Amen. 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 How many of y'all believe it for debt That's cancellation? Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's right. I continue to have faith in God and I believe in the prophecy which I believe set everything in motion. Amen. Amen. Say, set it in motion, Lord. Set, set it in set motion, motion, Lord. That's right. In June 2020, the house that I have been fighting for since 2017 was settled in my favor. Wow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. With the money from the house, I was able to buy a five bedroom house. I believe God for my own. Amen? Amen. Additionally, near the end of the closing of the older house, there was a $22,000 debt judgment against me since 2007 that was canceled. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. My God. Somebody says somebody's debt is about to be canceled. strengthened my faith in God and changed my family situation. I want to say to you all out there watching, whatever you are going through, come and experience God, the God of CIIC. It pays to serve God, especially with CIIC, where you see results if you believe. Hold on to the Almighty God and He surely will answer you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe God for your own. Amen. Connect and believe in the God of signs and wonders and miracles. It will happen for you. Amen. Amen. This next testimony says, 48 hours ago, I ran for shelter 
under the wings of my God revealed wow. prophets and spiritual parents, Papa Steve and Mama C. God revealed to me on Sunday whilst watching the message on the manifestations of the sons of God as Papa Steve preached that. That was the missing puzzle in my life. That was the catalyst and platform I required to propel me into my manifestation. Three days before this encounter, I found myself in a grave business predicament orchestrated by the enemy to destroy a global business position. I ran for shelter to my revealed prophet and prophetess who prayed and declared the counsel of God upon the situation. I felt the tide change immediately and the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding come upon me. As Mama said, settle down. My I can hear Mama saying that, <laughs> settle down. <laughs> Giving me Psalms 46 and verse number 10. In 48 hours, amen. Wow. So somebody say 48 hour turnaround. 48 hour turnaround. Number one, I found restoration with manufacturers. Amen. amen. Number two, God raised destiny helpers and called me to find incredible favor. Amen. I am now being mentored and shown the ropes by a director of EMEA for sales and supply chain for a large conglomerate. Wow. A total stranger I could have never crossed paths with naturally. But the exact skill set needed to take my business to global manifestation. Wow. Wow. Number three. We are about to sign a mutual NDA with a world leader in the same industry our product was invented to compete with. Wow. Now they want to endorse their competition, promote the product visibly, cover all marketing wow. and promotional costs, and potentially buy a license. Wow, wow somebody set a miracle. There's somebody who is watching, who was watching the service live on Sunday from London, England. My God, miracles are happening over this network. Those of you that are watching, I want you to plug in and I want you to just tie your faith to everything that you are hearing tonight. Because you are the next in line for a miracle. Somebody say, I'm next in line. That's why you need to share this with your friends. Send this out. Amen. If somebody who was not in this service could receive such a big miracle, wow. how about those of us that are listening to me live? I'm next in line. Amen. I'm next in line. Did you finish? Number four. <laughs> My God, how many testimonies? Four testimonies in one service. Five, Five. Five testimonies? Yes. My physical health has improved and I have clarity on what exactly to do next. Wow. I am building capacity and expecting exceedingly abundantly and above and beyond in Jesus' name. Oh, somebody lift your hands right now and start thanking God for the testimonies. The Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The question that we have been asking, where are the sons of God? Where are the where is the proof producing word of God? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these testimonies and we declare them permanent in the lives of those who are the recipients of it. <laughs> that they will come back and testify. And even you that is watching, you will come back and testify. Your testimony will be next in line in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh my God, my God. Somebody spoke to me in the week and they said, we, somebody has been tested positive for COVID-19 at my place of work. And so we, you know, there was this panic, there was this depression, there was this concern. And I said to them, I said, why are you concerned? I said, no, I'm just, that's just the way I am. I said, and listen, if you are following my ministry, I don't care who you have met, you are negative. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
I said you are negative. I said, I said, no, there was one person, there were two people, there were three people, so and so. And I said to the other one, I said, how about you? It's the person who said, Papa, I believe I am not, I don't have COVID-19. Amen. 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 Is somebody listening to me? Yes. And I said, you cannot prove it to I said, go and test, it's negative. They went and they tested, it was negative. Yes. I prophesied to you, I don't know who you are that is watching. I don't know who it is that is listening to me. Yes. The word of God, he, my God. Hallelujah. The Bible says God will do nothing but reveal himself to his servants, the prophet. Yes. He confirms the words of his servants and he performs the counsel of his messengers. Yes. Look at your neighbor say, I'm negative. I'm negative. Tell your neighbor, COVID-19 will not come near me. COVID-19 will not come near me. Because whatever touches your body that does not look like God, that does not smell like God, that does not feel like God, yeah. dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The blood that is running in your veins is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. I say it's the blood of Jesus. If you are born again, you have the life of God. You have the actual life of Jesus flowing through your life or through your body. Yeah. And nothing will stick. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm well. I'm well. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Say, the life of God life is flowing God. through my body. No sickness, no disease no will touch this body and survive. Whatever touches my body dies in the name of Jesus. My body dies. Do you have faith for that? Yes. So we can't afford to walk around in fear. No, sir. That's right. Amen. Amen. Do your business. Live your life. Believe God. Amen. His life is flowing in your body. Amen. Amen. Do all the things that I say you should do. <laughs> but above all, apply your faith Amen. in the word of God. That's why it's important to study the word, to meditate in the word, to live in the word, to spend time in prayer, spend time in worship. Don't spend time worrying. Amen. Spend time praising God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why you need to share this broadcast. So our message today is some sheep is for war. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. I am a believer in God. I don't know about you. And I'm a believer in his word. Because the Jesus said the words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. The word of God says what it means and it means what it says. If the word says you are blessed, you are blessed. If the word says you are healed, you are healed. There's no private interpretation of the word of God. Some people make it look like that. Is, it doesn't mean that. No, the word of God has no private interpretation. Amen. What you see is what it means. Amen. <laughs> That's why I say, I'm the Lord, I change not. So if the word says Jesus is doing miracles and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he will do miracles. Amen. Luke 2 and verse 52. Are we all there? Yes. All right. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now, here's a little background, something I wrote this afternoon. Jesus was God who came in human form. Jesus retained his divine nature, but limited himself to human attributes when he was in the flesh that is here on earth. So that he could be a true example of a sinless human being overcoming sin. Amen. And being anointed by the Holy Spirit and the power of God 
he was able to defeat Satan. Being anointed by the Holy Spirit and God's power, he was able to defeat Satan. The Bible, the text, the scripture, or the verse that we read said Jesus increased. The word there is the word grew. So Jesus grew in wisdom. Jesus grew in stature, meaning in height. And Jesus grew in favor, in other words, spiritual blessing. So there's some growing that needs to be done. That is why in the last service I said that as a child, Jesus could not defeat Satan. That is why when Herod was after his life, Joseph and Mary had to flee into Egypt to protect him because he was a child. So he had to be protected because he was a child. He could not protect himself. He could not fight for himself. He could not defend himself. Because he was a child. And now the Luke says that Jesus grew. Somebody says something is about to happen. The whole goal of the Christian life is for you and I to grow. And we are going to see the changes that take place when someone begins to grow. Christianity is not all about I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Because that is a standard that we have set to be for Christianity. I have accepted Jesus and that's it. We have set a ceiling over our spiritual lives to believe that once I say, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior, then I'm fine, I'm done. Waiting for heaven. Tell somebody there's some growing to be done. When he was a child, they protected him. They ran away with him into Egypt to preserve his life. But when Jesus grew, Nobody had to run away with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. It takes growing in spiritual things to be able to confront wicked spirits Amen. unleashed against you by the devil. This Christian life is a battle. It's not a destination. It is an ongoing warfare. Because the day you divorce Satan, He started coming after you and he's going to be after you for the rest of your life on this earth. So there is no rest. And that is why it is important that we grow. Because unless we grow, we cannot overcome the enemy that is after us. That is why Jesus grew in wisdom, he developed. In height, he developed. In favor with God and man, he developed. Because he needed all these different levels of development. You can develop in height, grow in height, but not develop mentally. There are lots of people who are grown people but mentally, intellectually, they are not developed. Yes. That's true. And then there's another dimension of growth and development, which is growing and developing in favor with God and man. And that is where our results come from. 
When you grow and increase in favor with God and man, good things begin to happen in your life. It's not enough to say, I am blessed and highly favored. Show me the blessing. Show me the highly favor. As favor increases, as the blessing increases, people are able to see the result of your Christianity. What gives us results in our Christianity is our development in favor with God and man. And that only takes place as we spend time in the word and prayer. It's not luck and it's not longevity in the church. As we develop spiritually, the Father is able to entrust us with more. Oh, I don't know whom I am talking to today. But I think I am enjoying this. I think I am enjoying this. There is some growing to be done. Unfortunately, we have limited this world to what? I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Are you still with me? All right, flip your pages to Galatians chapter 4. That's why it's important for you to open your own Bible so you can see some of these things. I'd like you to see them. Galatians 4. I'm reading from verse 3. Now watch this. Don't forget that Jesus grew. Amen. And don't forget that when he was a baby, they ran with him. But now Jesus grew. Amen. Verse 4. Verse 3. Even so, the Apostle Paul is writing, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Yes. When we were children, we were in bondage to the elements of the world. In other words, it was easy for certain things, including the elements, to oppress your life. Allergies could oppress you. When you are a child, you can't help yourself. Bad news on the internet, social media could oppress you yes, and depress you yes, because you are a child. You don't know what to do. That's why I don't like it when I talk to people and they say, and I ask, if I ask somebody a question, say, I don't know what to do. Now, if you say you don't know what to do, then we need to escort you into Egypt. <laughs> because a grown person is supposed to know what to do. That's why you are growing, so that you get to a place in your life where you can find solution right. to problems. Yes. We can't put our minds on neutral and just say, I don't know. <laughs> Means you need mental, intellectual development. If you don't know, ask somebody. But you can't just say, I don't know, and that's it. Paul says when we were children, we were in bondage to the elements of the world. We could not decide for ourselves. We could not wage war for ourselves. Is somebody listening to me? He said that when the fullness of time came, somebody said my fullness of time has come. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth, who did he send? A child? No, sir. Who did God send? God does not send children. God sends sons. Are you a son of God? Oh, there are only five sons of God in this place. Are you, now let me see, are you a son of God? Yeah. When the fullness of time came, that is why anybody who is going to be in any position of authority and leadership, you must be able to offer solutions Amen. to people's problems. Is that true? Yeah. That's why for you to become a president in America, I like the way they do it. In America, they interview you, president. You go through some interviews, some debates, and they challenge you, with bombard you. Now imagine you come into the debate and they say, Mr. President, uh, whoever you are, Mr. Whoever, yeah? 
president to be. If this and this happen in the nation, what are you going to do? I don't know. Are you going to be voted into, into office? No. That's why they challenge them. What are they doing? They are checking their mental intellectual development. They are checking their ability to solve problems. So you don't wake up one morning in the White House and say, Fellow citizens, I don't know what to do. We are going down. That's why no matter what is happening around the country, the leader always says, we are moving forward. We have so many jobs created. We have this stuff. Now, the news media can say anything. Anybody can say whatever. The president must be positive because he is leading us somewhere. So when you develop as a child of God, you become a son of God. God can entrust you with certain things. That's why when the fullness of time came, God did not send a child. Who did God send? He sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law. I prophesy today as you develop, may God make you an instrument of deliverance. I receive it. May God make you an instrument of leadership. Amen. I receive it. May God make you a solution provider. Amen. I receive it. May God use you to change people's lives. That is the goal of the Christian life. That's why Jesus was not afraid to say, you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth. Because what is the purpose of salt? Is to add flavor, to change the taste. What is the purpose of light? To bring people out of darkness. Whenever darkness, whenever light shows up, darkness must flee. And this is the responsibility of sons of God. That's why I'm asking, where are the sons of God? Because when there's darkness somewhere, a son of God shows up and says, let them be light. When there is darkness somewhere, when there's sickness somewhere, a son of God shows up and says, I declare you healed by the authority of heaven. When there's, when there's trouble somewhere, the Son of God shows up and said, by the authority of my Father, by tomorrow, within 24 hours, 48 hours, eh? yes. I declare that something must change. Many times I tell people, go take your answer and come back. Go take your job. Listen, I'm not being arrogant. Some people can consider it being arrogant. How can you say, go take the job? I'm talking, I'm a son. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, the Bible says in, in John chapter in John chapter 5, that the father judges no man, but he has committed all judgment to the son. Yes. Ah, somebody did not hear that. How many of you, how many of you are believing God for a son? Yes. In your life, in your home, yes. that you can commit all judgments to. You can entrust with your bank account. You can entrust with your signature. Oh. You can entrust with everything. Oh. The Bible said, the Father judges no man, but he has committed all judgment to the Son. So the Son has power. The Bible said, as the Father raised up the dead, even the Son has power and authority to raise whoever the Son wills. So you are a son of God. Never underestimate yourself as a child of God. Amen. Christianity is not about I am a, I'm, I'm a Christian. <laughs> it's more than that. It's about authority. It's about power. It is about carrying out some of the Father's duties. God is looking for sons. Amen. Not children. Amen. Come on now, somebody. Thank you, Lord. How many of you know there's a difference between a child and a son? Yes. You look at somebody driving a car and say, Who bought you the car? My son bought it. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I like your car. My son bought it. But when they're children, 
they actually break the car. But a son can buy you a car. So even in the same life, the father is looking for sons. Are you a son of God? Yes. yes. Now, the Bible says, when the time came, right? The appointed time, right? Jesus, the son of God, made of a woman under the law, he came to redeem those of us who were under the law. What did the law give us? Problems. I don't want to get into all of that. You can read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and look at all the curses of the law. But it took a son of God to come and redeem us. That we might also receive the adoption of sonship. That we might be adopted into sonship. Oh my God, I am a son of God. Yes, Lord. And it says, and because you are now sons, God, now listen to this. Because you are now sons, God has sent forth his spirit, the spirit of his son, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Because you have now grown and you are now a son. The Father has sent the Spirit of His Son into your heart so you can respond by saying, Abba, Father. Mm. All right, somebody didn't get that. Let me, let me try and break it down. Because you are now a son, you were adopted into sonship. You are now a son. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your heart. So that you can respond by saying, you are my father and I am your son. Ah, yeah. you miss a good place to clap right there. Yeah. So me, I don't know about you, I'm not just a child of God. I am a son of God. Amen. There's power, there's authority vested on this vessel. That I can declare things. One time, many years ago, I attended a wedding. And the moment I got to the wedding, it was, you know, this wedding was being done outside. And they had this large tent, nicely decorated, white tent. Beautiful decorations and everything. The moment I got to the, to the place and I was walking to my seat, it began to rain and the wind, a wild wind came from nowhere, started blowing away everything. Tearing the wedding and everything apart, dust, that place was dusty. So sweeping, blowing the dust everywhere. And the woman who was like the moderator of the MC, she said, I hear there's a man of God here. Where are you? Please, can you help us to stop this? Because at that moment, the bride and the groom were all about, they were just almost about to get out of the car to start, you know, marching towards the tent. Yes, and the lady was in her white robe. She says, I hear there's a man of God in this place. And the devil whispered to me, today, you shall be found out that you are not the man of God that you think you are. I said, devil, shut up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I walked out quickly and I took the microphone. And I said, everybody stand up, lift up your hands. I forgot it was a wedding. I thought it was church. <laughs> everybody stand up, lift up. I said, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command the wind to cease, the rain to stop, so that this wedding can continue. In under five seconds, there was a complete total calm. It's like nothing had happened. Amen. Yes, Lord. I walked back to my seat with my shoulders high. And everybody in that wedding wanted prayer after the wedding. Because it was identified as a son of God in the wedding. Hallelujah. The Bible said that the first miracle that Jesus performed was where? At the wedding. Hey. That wedding made me popular. Everybody wanted prayer. Everybody, can I have the address of your church? <laughs> Amen. There's a son of God. Yes. 
You want to go somewhere and show off and show off. You see, the anointing is for manifestation. The anointing is for display. The anointing is to show forth. Is somebody listening to me? Yes, God gave you the anointing so you can show off in his name. So you go somewhere and something happens and everybody say, who are you? Can I, I want to know you are God. <laughs> yes, come and see. God uses an anointing to introduce you yeah. to places. Boy, I became popular after that wedding. But I don't boast to say that it was me who did it. No, it's my father who did it because I'm a son of God. Amen. Who, say he who believes shall not be ashamed. Amen. He who believes shall not be ashamed. So I'm still lo I'm looking. So from that day, I began to look. I knew where there's a wedding. And there's <laughs> wedding and wedding. I want to go stop it. Because how do you know that God can use you to do miracles when one miracle happens? Yes, right. yes. Then you know that the door is open. Yes, right. yes. So I prophesy to those of you that are watching me, whatever is wrong in your life, my God will fix it right now. Amen. By the authority of the name Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Are we still reading? All right. God sent forth the spirit of his son into our heart. So do you have, you see, sons of God have the spirit of their father in their heart. That's how we get to know when our father is talking to us. He says, wherefore thou art no more a servant. Oh, some people have remained servants for many years in the church. You see the word servant, there's the word slave. Remember I said that? Yes, sir. So he says, now when you become a son, you have progressed. You are no longer a slave. Watch this. Let's keep reading. He said, you are no longer a servant. But a what? Somebody help me. If you are reading from your own Bible, what does he say? You are no longer a servant, but a what? Son. You are what? On the line in your Bible, I am a son. And then it goes on to say, if a son, then and heir. if you are a son, you are what? An heir. An heir of God through Christ. How be it then? When you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are not gods. So we serve the world. When we did not know God. He said, but now, I like verse 9. But now, after that, you have known God. Or rather, are known of God. I like that one. <laughs> when, when you are son of God, God knows you. Okay, somebody, amen, somebody amen. I think I like the people who are here on Sunday better than you all who came today. <laughs> How many of you like the people who are here on Sunday? Those people were, they, I mean, those people were more responsive than the people who are here today. Amen. <laughs> now, let's look at it again. He said, but now, after that, you have known God. Or then the, then the writer said, or rather, that you are known of God. Do you remember we read from Matthew, from Luke chapter 1? Where the Bible says, as Jesus was being baptized, the heavens opened. I want you to remember that sentence there. Yes. That known of God. Now that you know God, rather that you are known of God. Did you see that? Yes. Yeah. He said, but now that you know God, rather are known of God. Jesus, what, what did the Father say about Jesus in Luke chapter 1? You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. There were many people in that crowd, but that statement was for one person only Jesus. who was known of God. Right. 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 Huh. To be a son, you know everywhere you go around today, I know God. It's my Lord and Savior. Uh -huh. 
I know Jesus is my Lord. The question is not how many of us know God. The question is how many does God know? Wow, that's good. Come on, somebody. It's not about we know God. <laughs> you can know the president. How many of you know the president? Come on now. Does he know you? No. How many know the governor? Does he know you? No. But when somebody walks in here and says, I know the, the president, the president knows me personally. The atmosphere changes. You're like, I've got a connection right there. Yes, so the same way when you are son of God, God knows you. And you walk in somewhere, you say, God knows me. And I know him. Somebody said, please, can you lay hands on me? I just want you to just lay your hand on me. Says that God bless you, receive the blessing. Amen. Let good things happen to you. Amen. I am excited about this thing. I am talking about a God I know, and I'm talking about a God who knows me. That is what growing does. Many people can quote the scriptures. Many people can pull crowds. But how do we know that the Father know you? Here is an example. Jesus would often say, Father, glorify your Son so that your Son will glorify you in return. And the Father will perform the miracle. Yes, sir. Yes. But you know how many times some of us can scream and shout, Oh God, hear me. It's like God is deaf, he's not hearing. It begins with the knowing. How much does God know you? When he showed up at the funeral of Lazarus, he didn't pray a very long prayer. He said, Father, I know you always hear me. But for the sake of the people who are here, Lazarus, come out. Father, I know you always hear me. Oh my God, I'm taking you to another level. This is this is now college level Christianity. Come on, Papa. Because when we're used to we're used to elementary things of scripture. <laughs> and then he said to the house of the Listen to that prayer. Father, I know you always hear me because you know me. And I know you. But for the sake of the people who are here, that's why I even decided to pray. But otherwise, Lazarus, where are you? The Bible says that he that was dead came forth, bowed hands and feet, and he looked at Lazarus and said, Loose him and let him go. Amen. Yes, sir. Somebody said, I'm a son of God. Oh my God, I'm excited about this thing. I can love this thing.
some years back at a conference in South Africa. And a lady at the end of the service, a pastor who, was, who had invited me to this conference came running after me. I was actually on my way. I was about to leave the building to get into the car and to go. The pastor ran after me and said, there's a lady here in my church who wants to, you to pray for her. I said, what is it? The lady came to me with papers, with documents, medical reports showing HIV positive. Her husband died four years earlier of the same disease. And she's holding these documents in her hands and she's crying. I could see her eyes were all red and full of tears. She said, help me, man of God. And compassion filled my heart. And I looked at the woman. I said to her, I said, Lady, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are healed. I said, go and enjoy your life. Amen. Six months later, I was invited back to that church. The lady went and tested and she was negative. She was negative. She remarried again. She got a job working with the airlines. And she was looking fresher. And she moved on with her life again. Are you a son of God? such power and authority to the church. Yes. But it is sad that people in the church don't know this thing. Yes. Yes. Look at this. It says, but now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage. You see that? Now, this is what he's saying. Now, you have a new status, son of God. Why do you want to lower your standard? He said, because you have come out of childhood, Christianity, into sonship. Instead of manifesting your sonship, some desire to remain in babyhood elementary Christianity in weakness with no power and they want to remain beggarly, in other words, in poverty. Sonship is not just a title. I'm a son of God. No. When Jesus became a son, the father said to him, Son, I am well pleased about you, but go and defeat Satan. Hey. Come on, somebody didn't hear me. Son, I am well pleased about you, but go and defeat Satan. Yes, Sonship is not a title. Sonship is war. Welcome to sonship. I say, welcome to sonship. Amen. When you become a son of God, you can confirm the kingdom of darkness. Oh, no wonder many churches don't do deliverance today. Oh, no wonder many churches don't pray for the sick anymore. Now I understand. Because when you are a son, you have to go and face the devil. That's right. That's right. Mm. We don't want to talk about the devil anymore. I just want to say, that. look, I, I, I don't focus on the devil, but anywhere I find him, Jesus said, get him out. That's right. That's right, Papa. Jesus went to preach in one church, and there was a woman there for 18 years, bound. And Jesus, before he started his ministry, before he started preaching, it's all right? Yes. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Jesus, before he began ministry, he saw this woman there bound. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Woo. 
Quickly, quickly. Wow. Thank you. He saw this woman sitting there. <laughs> Bound. And this woman was a member of that church. Probably 18 years or even more. And Jesus said, Well, today, before I announce my text, <laughs> woman, stand up right. The woman was healed instantly. And when the pastor came over to close the service, he said, I have a very important announcement to make. He said, you all here, don't come here to this church to be healed on Sunday. You want to be healed, come privately on another day in the back room. Or I just lost some people here right now. And Jesus said, you hypocrites. How can you say this woman should not be healed? No, 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 this church is just a teaching church. We're just here just to teach the word. And just to understand things about God. That Jesus broke the protocol. He healed on the Sabbath and the people were offended. Because for them, the Sabbath was more important than the miracle. I didn't know time has gone like this. Oh my God. I'm not even in my message. I'm still doing introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. You see, one thing about sons of God is that whenever a son of God shows up somewhere and there's something wrong, they want to fix it. That's right. That's right, son. A son of God will not walk into a place and somebody is bound by demons and they say, Jesus, love you with all the demons. No. No. When they are sick, the son of God says, You have to be healed. When you are son of God, you don't want them to be broke. You have to receive miracle money. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Amen. No, all this miracle, miracle people are just following. Do you know it's very good to follow miracles? Yes. Amen. Especially when you know that it's your father doing the miracle. Yes. Amen. This beginning of miracles Jesus did, and his disciples believed in him. Miracles, when a miracle happens, is God intervening. So how can you say that people are following God's intervention? I want God to intervene in my life. How many of you want God to intervene in your life? Yes, amen. I need a miracle every day. How often? Every day. How often? I need a miracle every in my life. Every single day. I want God to do miracles for me. Yes. I'm actually looking for a church where miracles are happening. Hey, see, I see. <laughs> because I don't want to stay in my problems. I mean, I've been in this problem a long time. I want to get out of it. I want somewhere where miracles are happening. I want miracles to happen in my life. I want something to change. You believe that something is about to change? Yes, sir. How many believe that something is about to change? Yes. I don't know if I, oh my God. He said, how do you desire to want to stay in bondage anymore? I don't want to stay in bondage anymore. I suffered under the dominion of Satan when I was a, a, an unbeliever. Why do I want to suffer again under the dominion of Satan after that I'm born again? I am a son of God now. Anyway, Jesus said, when you see Satan anywhere, do what? Cast him out. Amen. Yes. That's what Jesus said. Cast him out. Yes. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Yes. No wonder the Son of God, whenever he walked anywhere, anywhere demons were hiding anybody, the demons immediately began to cry out. Son of God, have you come to torment us before the time? Because they recognize the authority and the power of sons of God. You can't fellowship in the same church with demons for years and they don't cry out. Mm. 
that's that's true. If you are truly a son of God, they will cry out and they will come out. Every son of God has the right to cast out devils. It's not for specific ministers. Every son of God has the right and the power to heal the sick. Every son of God has the right and power to do miracles. That's why I keep asking, where are the sons of God? Where are the sons of God? That's my question. I'm looking for somebody who can answer that question for me. Where are the sons of God? Those of you that are watching me out there, are you a son of God? One woman said to me, he said, thank you for healing my high blood pressure. You see, it was her high blood pressure. When the son of God showed up, her, her high blood pressure was healed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no wonder when Paul showed up in a particular city, a girl who was using witchcraft, a family was using a girl to make money mm. through her to do witchcraft. When Paul looks at the spirit came out. The, the people got mad at Paul. Mm. And they chased him out of their city. They wanted to kill him because he had stopped their business. Yeah. Son of, sons of God, we have zero tolerance for demonic activities. Mm. And many times people don't understand us sons of God. When the son of God entered into a church and instead of it being a church and a house of prayer, they were doing other things. He tore down the place, kicked the tables. The Bible put it there at the bottom says, because the seal of the Lord's house had consumed him. You see, sons of God are consumed. Yes. They are consumed by the seal yes. Yes. of their father. Right. And some people say, no, you know, you are too, you, you, you know, you, you are taking these things to extreme Wow. You, you, are, you are very aggressive. You are being abrasive. Right. Right. Or you are overdoing this thing. Why can't you just be calm and, you know, just like mm. everybody else? Mm. No, the sons of God have something burning on the inside of them. Yes. 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 It's called a fire. Yes. It's called a word, the fire. Receive the fire. Receive. receive the fire. I receive. Receive the fire. I receive it. Sons of God are consumed yes. with a fire. Mm. Jeremiah said, I tried to close the book, but his word was burning in me like fire shot up in my bones. Yes. 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 <laughs> I am manifesting. I am manifesting. Right now, those of you that are 
watching. Healing is coming to your body. Healing is coming. Healing to your finances. Healing for your family members, your relationships. Oh, no more depression. No more depression. No more confusion. No more harassment. No more demonic molestations. In the name of the Lord, I declare today by the authority of God, by the authority of God, as a son of God, whatever has tormented you shall torment you no more. I prophesy to the people here, may your doors open. Oh, sit your bosom, lift up your hands, O oh, gate, and be ye lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong. God is never associated with weakness. Therefore, today, in the name of Jesus, I declare every weakness go. Every weakness go. Paralysis go. Confusion go. Fear go. Poverty go. In the name of the Lord, go. Whatever does not look like God in your life. Ah. Possible before you came here tonight and consider it done. Yes, you are coming to testify it. on Sunday and say, Consider it done. I receive it. Yes. I hear the voice of the Lord say, Cry no more. Amen. He said, The next cry you cry is going to be a cry of joy. Amen. Somebody, my God, somebody, can you begin to practice how to cry for joy in this house? <laughs> because He's turning your soul into joy. The next time you cry, it will cry of abundance. It will be Father, oh, who am I that you have done so much for me? That will be your cry. Amen. It's not going to 
baby, Lord, why are you waiting for how long? No. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Father, we thank you. Oh, yes. I want to pray right now. Oh, yes. I want to pray right now. But before I pray for you, I want to pray specifically for your finances today. Yes. Because the Son of God, Jesus Christ, said to Peter, put your hook in the water. And pull out the fish, open his mouth, and get some money out of it. And pay the taxes. Some of you have bills to pay. I want to pray specifically. I want to prophesy and pray into your finances. Yes. I'm not going to pray a long prayer. I may only declare one word. But before we do that, I want to give you the opportunity to give your offerings and to sow your seed. Jesus, the words of Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. He who sows sparingly shall receive also sparingly. He who gives bountifully shall receive also bountifully. And the Lord Jesus said, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure. This is the words of the Son of God. And I want to speak in your finances today. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen money multiplying in people's bank accounts. Mm. Hallelujah. We've seen people receiving financial gifts. And you are a candidate for the next. Amen. 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 I receive. And so right now, I want you to prepare that offering and give towards our media projects. Yes. Amen. Give like you are buying an equipment. Don't give. That like you are giving to somebody on the streets who is desperate. Give like you are sponsoring a project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are watching online, we have the cash app, we have the PayPal, we also have the Christ Image International Church app. You can give through any of these platforms. And I want to pray specifically for your finances today. I see some people have already started giving and say, I gave Papa. That's right. God bless you. Go ahead right now. If you're giving online, sow your seed. Give to us our media project. That is what we are building right now. I want you to sow a seed into the media project. CIC, we want to upgrade our media. We have word and spirit television. And I want you to be a partner of Word and Spirit TV. For those of you who have the church app, when you look in the app, you can already see that the Word and Spirit TV is already in the app. So if you, are, you can designate your giving to any of the different you know, uh, platforms within the app. Amen. You can channel your giving to any of the departments there. So I want you to give like you are giving towards a project. If this message has blessed you, sons of God are people who make things yes. happen. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says that the Father judges no man. He has committed all judgment to the Son. Yes. <laughs> there are some duties the Father no longer does. That's right. It's left for sons. If you are a son of God, you are, you are going to be a giver. Because sons of God are givers. Amen. Because they have a heart for the advancement of their father's business. Which is a kingdom. Yes. Yes. Unless you are not a son of God. If you are not a son of God, it's a waste. I'm losing him. This all they want is my money. Mm -hmm. If you are a son of God, you will advance your father's yes. business. Yes. Right. Yes. Are there any sons here? Yes. So if you are a son of God, go ahead. If you are online and you are a son of God, it's not time to switch off. If you turn, if you disconnect right now, I doubt I put a question mark on your sonship. Because sons are people who make things happen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's true. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Sons make things happen. Yes, sir. Children don't make nothing happen. In fact, they tear down yes. things. Yes. So lift your offering right now. Here's my check. I'm a son of God. I don't miss any opportunity to give to my father. And I don't just give anything, I give real good. Because I know it will come back to me 100 fold. Father, tonight in Jesus' name, I bless those who are giving online. 
If you desperately need a financial breakthrough, give an offering. Those that are in the sanctuary, I prophesy into your finances. And I decree and I declare debt cancellation. And I decree and declare that gifts will come to you. I decree and I declare salary raises. And I decree and I declare that my father will prosper your business. In Jesus' name, Father, prove that I am your son. And that you have sent me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What do you say? I receive. What do you say? I receive. Put your offering in the basket. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless him. Multiply and increase him abundantly in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Father, bless her in the name of Jesus and that you will lack nothing. Go and be blessed. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this live broadcast. If this broadcast or this message bless you today, I want you to share with your friends. I want you to put it out there, send it, get the link, send it out by text, on WhatsApp, wherever, as far as you can send it, it will be a great blessing. You will be participating in kingdom building. Amen. So may the Lord bless you. And feel free to call our number for prayer. Feel free to sow a seed into this ministry. And we join our faith with your faith. That God will answer you Amen. in the next 48 hours. Yes. God bless you. I will see you again in the next broadcast. Amen. Goodbye.